What's up YouTube, DSKin1711, the best damn thing in gaming around, coming at you guys with a brand new deck profile today. This is more going to be a meta deck Wednesday one, because it's not a road deck and it's Wednesday. It's a one time off, most likely, but anyway, main reason is, this deck has been so good for me lately, I wanted to show you guys what it is. Um, it's good both host links like in the link format as well as current format as well um so yeah let's get into it this is mermel synchro and starting thing off, things off we have three gamma seal the seed total kaiju now you could technically side deck this card if you wanted to i haven't mained right now mainly for the fact that i wanted uh, main deck answers for things like masterpiece uh, crystal wing seco dragon Anything else that just can't be immediately destroyed by card effects in a battle. So, I went with three copies of Ga um, Ga Gamma Seal because it synergizes really well with the rest of the deck being a water attribute. Um, up next, we have three Mermel and Abyss Megalos. This is your bread and butter of the deck right here. Um, it's your big boss monster, it's your OTK en enabler. Um, you can discard two other water monsters to your graveyard, especially something that's from your hand. You can then add one Spiss spell and trap from your deck to your hand. Um, nine times out of ten, because it's the only one I have but that I'm running, is the Spiss scale of the Mizuzu G, which I'll go over here shortly. Um, and then you and then you contribute one other face-up attack position water monster, and you can make a second attack during the battle phase. Pretty damn good. Um, next up we have three Mermel Abyss Twos. You could technically probably run this at two. Um, I run it at three because it enables a lot of the combos for this deck. But you can summon it, special summon it by discarding one one other water monster. And then if it's summoned this way, you can add one level for a lower Mermel monster from your deck to your hand. So it's pretty good. Up next we have our two copies of Atlantean Dragoons. Um, it's a really good card for the deck. You discard it for any of the effects. Or, when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect, you add one serpent type monster from your deck to your hand. And, so a lot of the deck is serpent. Um, you got Megalo, you've got, nah, not her, um, let's see. You got Deep Sea Diva, you've got the other Atlanteans. And you've got Neptibus as well. So let's, let's see. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 targets for his search effect. You're getting good for this one. Up next, we have 3 Mermel Abyss Gundies. When it's discarded, you can target one Mermel in your graveyard, except Gundy itself. And special summon that target. Which can, again, enable a lot of combos. Up next, we have one copy of Abyss Spike. Um, he's just a regular, no, just an additional normal summon you can have. But when he is normal summoned, you can discard one water monster to the graveyard and add a level 3 water monster from your deck to your hand. Pretty good. Um, one Abyss Dying. Again, it's, this one's kind of situational, but if it's added to your hand by a card effect, you can special summon if you control Mermel. Which does come in handy at times. Up next, we have one copy of Deep Sea Diva. So, another little normal summon you can do to thin your deck out a little bit. Everyone wants to know what this card does by now, but if you don't, if it's normal or special, if it's normal summon, you can special summon one level 3 or lower sea, sea serpent type monster from your deck. So, pretty much, it's, uh, it's going to be going for your marksman, soldier. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be going for Neptibus. And that's about it. Uh, next up, we have one Atlantean Marksman. When it's discarded, you can target one set card your opponent controls and destroy it. As well as three Heavy Infantry. When it's discarded, you can target one face up card your opponent controls and destroy it. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be using him. And very rarely you'll be using him, but he does come in handy. Up next is the combo starter of the deck. 3 Neptibus the Atlantean Prince. 
He's what you want to have in your ha opening hand 9 times out of 10. Because he has two different effects. The first one, you can send one Atlantean monster from your deck to the graveyard, except Neptibus, and add one Atlantean card from your deck to your hand. So, what you're going to do here, 9 times out of 10, is you're going to send Dragoons from your deck to add either Muxman or Heavy Infantry, whichever one you need, and then you'll pop. Oh, what just happened? Well, it just got removed. Um, give me one sec, guys. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what got removed, so I just refreshed the uh, page. Anyway, so nine times out of ten, you're gonna be sending dragoons and grabbing either one of these, and then you'll pop off dragoons' effect to grab any other sea serpents. And then his other effect is that you send to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, target one Atlantean monster in your graveyard, special summon. So that comes in pretty handy. Up next we have our other tuner for the deck, or at least for the main deck, three copies of Fishboard Launcher. Which is everything in your graveyard, and the only thing you have in your graveyard are water monsters, you can special summon from in your grave. It comes in handy. You can discard it off Megalo, off of Abyss Tooth, uh, Spike, and then summon it right back, and go for a single play. And last, but not least for the monsters, we have one copy of Moulin Gracia, the Elemental Lord. Just because it's a Marmal deck, it helps out, it gets OTKs a little bit easier. Um, going to the spells, we have two copies of Instant Fusion. Which, we all should know what Instant Fusion does. It allows you to special summon a level 5 or lower fusion monster from your deck. The only copy we use here is Sea Monster of Theseus, who happens to also be a tuner. Up next, we have three copies of Moray of Green. You shuffle two water monsters into your hand, from your hand into your deck, and then draw three cards. Can be really helpful to get things like Dragoons back into the deck, uh, infantry to be searched out later. Multiple copies of Nectabus. Yeah. Up next, we have three copies of Forbidden Chalice. This helps against those monsters that have effects that can't make them that can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. Hit them with this, then you hit them with the Chalice. Then you hit them with either the either pop them off with the Soldier or run them over with the Megalo. One copy of Abyss Skill and Mizuchi. It can only be equipped to a Mermel monster, and that monster gains 800 attack. But it's mainly used for a second effect, which is when a spell effect is activated on your opponent's side of the field. Negate that effect, then send this card to the graveyard. It's a one-time free negation. It only negates, it does not destroy. So if they use some, so if they activate something like, say, Dragon Diagram, it's going to be negated, but it'll still be on the field. One copy of a one for one, because we do have like, what, six targets in here for it? The three Nectabits and the three launchers. One Upstart Goblin, uh, just gets to your OTK pieces faster. And then one Rageki in the main deck. The extra deck, we have one Sea Monster Theseus, which I've already kind of talked about. It's a level five tuner that we can grab off of Instant Fusion. One Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Everyone knows what this does. Two copies of White or a Whale. Now you might be wondering why White or a Whale. Well, that, that's a tongue twister, by the way. Well, first off, let me tell you how you summon it. You need one Water Tuner and one or more Non Tuner Water Monsters. Hence why we're running this in Mermels. And when it is Synchro Summoned, it can destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. That's damn good right there. On top of that, it can make two attacks on monsters each battle phase. So let's say your opponent has three monsters on the field, you, this can attack two of them. And with doing 800 attack, it's most likely getting over them. But it's next to two effects, and what I like it most about it. First off, it inflicts piercing damage to defense position monsters. And you all know I love piercing damage as it is. But the, its final effect is what makes it really good, especially in Link format, is that if it's destroyed by opponent's card, by battle or card effect, and sent to your graveyard, 
you can banish one other water monster from your graveyard, special summon in this card, and if you do, it's treated as a tuner. Now, since it's self-reviving, it's not going to be stuck in your extra monster zone. It will self-revive to the main monster zone. And that's what makes it really good in a link format, because it frees up your extra monster zone for other things. Up next, we have one copy of Coral Dragon. It's just a generic level 6 we can go into that just happens to also be a tuner. Um, the only level 2 non-tuner that we have though is the Heavy Infantry. So more often than not, if you do go into this, you're using it to be destroyed and get the, the free card draw. One, Brionic Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This is our other generic level 6 and it's too good not to include, especially when we're running all waters. Um, one high speed Roy Chambara. This is another piece to, to uh, the OTK if you need it. If not, it's just there. It's too good not to include, so. Uh, one Sukinoki. This allows. This is actually a really good card for this deck because a lot of times you'll be stuck with uh, Deep Sea Diva and Noctibus on the field. You can make this. It's a level 3 Synchro, who also happens to be a tuner. And if you use this as a synchro material, one of the other materials can be from your hand. So it makes it so it's pretty good. Uh, that's it for the synchros in this deck. Moving on to the exceeds, we have one Abyss Gaios. I mean, it's a Mermel deck, you're gonna have rank sevens, and Abyss Gaios is one of the best ones for Mermels. Up next, we have number 11 Big Eye. Again, rank seven. Which you can make with Tooth and Megalo. And you detach one and steal opponent's monster. Pretty good. Uh, then for rank 4s, we have one Castell, one Abyss Dreller, and one Bahamut Shark. Um, this is more so for current format than link format, but you can still use this in link format. You just have to have a link monster out there first. Because his uh, special summon, you would have to have link markers. And then one tree charge to be summoned off the Bahamut Shark. Um, so, that's the deck. We're going to get into some games real, or some replays real quick. And we'll be right back. Alright, guys, we're into the replays now. And as you can see, the first deck we're up against is ABCs with a Galaxy Soldier attack in it, as well as Trans Modify. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, I think, I, no, I mean, I had him go first, he goes for the gold gadget, getting Buster, and then transmodifies into the, uh, Bust B Buster into a Galaxy Soldier. I'm like, holy crap, that's actually a nice little tech. So then he's gonna trigger off the Busters if I get the C, as well as the Soldiers, and go into Infinity. And then set a solemn mode. Solemn last strike. Now here you see I open up pretty dang good. I got the chalice. I got a couple of net vests. I can make actually some plays with it. I'm going to chalice off hit the chalice first to uh, bait the infinity. Then I'm going to go into my Neptibus plays. He strikes the Megalo. He actually struck the Meg Megalo. And like, at this point, I'm like, well, okay. That's fine. My other stuff's still going to pop off. And then I proceed to go into a Pestus instead. Getting Gundy and getting another Megalo. And after all that, he decides just to race play. Alright, we play number two. We're up against Fluffles this time. And he's open decently for Fluffles. He's got the bear and the owl, as well as the goods, and two polys. That's actually a pretty good opening hand for Fluffles. Meanwhile, I'm over here sitting with a Megalo, a Launcher, a Netabus, a Chalice, and an Instant Fusion. And I'm thinking, what can I do here? 
Let's keep in mind this replay will be more for the current format than link format. So I think it do go into two synchros at the time. But it's actually pretty fun. So he's gonna go first, which a fluffer player never wants to do. And he gets the toy vendor and goods and what all that. He goes off with fluffles for the longest time. <laughs> he gets the dog, he goes into sheep. And then he just passes turn. He actually has a fusion recycling plant. I just noticed that. Anyway, I here I'm thinking for a split second I'm thinking uh, sheep triggers on field instead of in the graveyard, so I'm gonna chalice it and get it so it can't revive. Yeah, that's a mistake on my part, I'll admit. But it still works out in the end. So then I go into Neptibus, send the Dragoons. I forget, oh yeah, I grab another Megalo. I pop the sheep with the infantry, as well as this card, the launcher. I get my scales as well. Then I go into my white or whale. Pause. I go into my white or whale and get rid of that thing for good now. Then I revive my launcher. No, I use launcher and megalo to make whale. Then I instant fusion for the mo sea monster and to sync that with the Neptibus to make coral drag. And attacking for pretty good de damage, not quite lethal, but he's one attack away from it. He goes into the tiger, popping both my monsters. I get both of their effects because they both have three out when they're destroyed. And I don't think he realizes this at first because I'm like the only person who actually wants to run white or a whale <laughs> that I know of. So I get my draw and I revive my white or a whale and I draw into Gamma Seal. And he's gonna go off here pretty good. Again, he actually destroys white or a whale again by with the Kraken. He takes me down to 100 life points. I'm like, what well, crap? Here I'm already, get another Neptibus, thank god. And what did I, oh yeah, I did do the Dragoons grabbing the Harry Infantry, and grabbing the Megalo. And then I discard the Infantry, the Megalo, and the, the second launcher. I think I popped his Sabretooth here. Yes. And then I go into another White or a Whale, and attack the game. Alright, we'll be right back with what Alright guys, last few play of the day. This time we're up against Volcanics, and he's running lose one turn. And that does hinder me for a little bit at first. But I'm mainly enjoying this replay for a funny thing that happens towards the end of the match. And why I feel White or Whale is so damn good going into Link format. Or even currently. So He's gonna go first, if I remember right. Yep, he sets two and goes card card D. Yeah, I opened decently. I've got the instant, I got the Gundy, I got two and infantry. It's a nice opening hand. I almost, I immediately go into Gundy instant fusion combo and make white or whale. And when I start doing that, he flips, lose a turn. And I'm like, well, this is a minor inconvenience. Because now anything I special summon is immediately going to go into the fence position. But I proceed to go ahead and summon the white or well, anyway, as well as the Abyss Tooth. Pitching, I believe, the launcher, yes. And I decide I'm going to make two whales this turn. I set the chalice to bait it out. I make two whales. I'm sitting good. He goes regular. What did he say? He said a magic planter. 
another loser turn, and a mystical space cyclone, and a shell. Now, here's the thing that he doesn't realize at this point. White or whale does piercing damage. Remember that. Shell has zero defense. And I draw into a diva. I'm like, okay. And I realize, oh crap, another loser turn. But here I go ahead and go Sukinoko into high speed Chambara. And attack his whale, his shell, and the draft even with 2400. His turn, he draws a pile of duality. Venus Chain, Mirror Force, or all fire stone guard. He made your plan. And sets the Mirror Force. As well as another shell. Now you would think he'd set the guards. No. He set the shell. Well, I have two piercing damage monsters on the field. He thinks he's safe behind this mirror force. I'm just gonna go straight for the attack. He mirror forces. Both my whales get destroyed. And both whales get their effects to self revive. And it's still the battle phase. And they can attack again if they revive. He thinks he's changed. Trying to think that's gonna get rid of it. Nope. That's game. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we'll be right back with the deck once more in just one second. Alright, guys, we're back with the deck. And I just wanna say this deck has been serving me so damn well. I almost always get the OTK with the Mermels, with the uh, Omegalo. And I do sometimes even go into the Whale. There are times where I've been able to go into Trish. Um, the one replay is the only time I've gone into the Chambara. I rarely actually go into my Exceeds because this is Mermel Synchro. But hey, it is a fun deck. It's, it's fun, it's competitive, it's really good going into Link format because you don't really need your extra deck that much. Um, you can make the whale pretty easily, and that's like the only thing from the extra deck you really need. Um, I forgot to mention this during the actual deck profile. The 15th card in the extra deck will be Master Boy from uh, Circuit Break. But that's like how many months down the road. So for the time being, I'm just running the 14. And I'll probably run like a Deco Talker or something like that. That's the 15th for the time being. But uh, yeah, that's been the deck, guys. Till next time, this is Dance Spring 1711, signing off.